You have the space to sim race. Let's take a look at my small office. What's going on everybody? This is Mike, welcome to Redline Sim Racing. Today we're going to take a look at my small office and kind of just show you that you don't need a ton of space to sim race. Um, in addition, we'll take a look at uh, maybe like a quick, a quick look at uh, my sim racing rig and uh, also take a look at how I have some of this stuff wired and set up. And then you have, if you have some questions, uh, let me know in the comments below. Um, while you're down there, if you don't mind, consider subscribing to the channel. Um, so like I said, <clears throat> I've got basically a, I don't know, 10 by 12 office um, that I've got you know, my home working stuff set up, as well as a triple screen sim racing rig. And totally understand, you know, not everybody has the luxury of a dedicated office in their house or a triple screen sim racing setup. Totally get it. But what I want to start to show is even the larger um, sim racing rigs, you can, you can squeeze them in places. And if you don't have a larger sim racing rig, you're going to have something smaller, even better, um, because you can always find a, a place to put it. I think the other thing to highlight, too, is when it comes to sim racing, and you know, I'll have people come over you know, to my house and take a look at my rig, and they think, oh my gosh, that thing looks so incredible, it's so much fun, is the best sim racing rig is the one... That works for you. The best sim racing rig is the one that fits within your budget. Um, and these things are always upgradable over time. Uh, you know, I started out probably a decade ago doing some sim racing stuff and slowly, you know, bought things, sold things, bought more things, sold things. And eventually you kind of just get to a place where you blink and a, a decade goes by, but you also have your, your dream uh, sim racing rig. So, um, let's take a look at the office. I am going to run through some things that aren't exactly sim racing related, but I think it helps paint the picture of, um, how much things you can fit into a small space. Then we'll take a quick look at the rig itself. Um, and I'll do a separate video on the actual like next level racing cockpit and, and some of the other stuff that you'll see in that setup. And then, um, yeah, we'll go from there. So let's, uh, let's take a look. All right. So let's, uh, start the tour of a small little 10 by 12 space. Um, moved my office chair out of the way so I have a little more room, but as you walk in, uh, you can see I've got my sim racing uh, rig set up right here, triple 43s, next level racing, uh, 160 Ferrari edition, cockpit, Ace Tech wheelbase, Ace Tech pedals, Ace Tech wheels, and then actually a seat out of a totaled uh, 2014 Mustang that I actually got at a junkyard for $140. Um, and we'll get into that, uh, in a moment. Um, but if we keep going, you can see there's some things I have squeezed in here. So I've got this filing cabinet underneath here that fits almost perfectly under these monitors. Um, I've just got a standard L shaped desk, some of my audio equipment, some studio monitors, my desktop PC, a actual media server sitting over there, some headphones I work on, and then if, or I, I love listening to, and then if we swing back around, again, you can see the sim racing rig from this side. Um, comes out fairly close to the door, but as you can see, there's plenty of room there with how that um, monitor sticks out. So I can just show you, you've got more than enough room to close and open the door. And then just backing up, um, I do play a little bit of bass, and so I've got my bass cabinet and amp, and then a couple basses hanging uh, up on the wall. And so let's talk a little bit about the wiring here. So I've got my PC roughly, you know, you're looking at probably, you know, this entire wall, which is going to be 12 feet away from this wall, so it's probably 12, 14, probably 16 feet away. And so I'm actually using some pretty long wires to get to this as far as like display ports are concerned and USB cables. And so I know generally, you know, they say not to run USB cables, say over 15 feet. However, I have the K2 
cable coming out of this base, and I know the lighting isn't great back here, it runs down the wall into just little plastic rails um, along the baseboard. And then I have that come up into a power USB hub that I can also turn on and off. And then another 15 foot USB cable right into the PC. And so from powered source to the PC, it's still roughly 15 feet, so I'm still within it. And I haven't seen any negative effects to that. The other great thing, and just talking about the Asetek wheelbase, is it does have a USB hub essentially built into it. So it's all USB-C, and so any components that I do buy, I can wire in with USB-C into the Asetek base and then just still, you know, have everything run through this single hub. The bandwidth should be fine, which is another reason I really like um, the Asetek hub. Other things of note, I probably will be either be moving this PC back over here behind this monitor so it's close. Um, however, I'll be honest with you, there's just an aesthetic thing to me of wanting my good PC out on display. And as you notice, I don't have a lot of RGB. I don't really love that. I used to do it all the time, but I wanted to go with a stealth build here. Um, so I've got the 4090 in there. And then um, just some Arctic fans, uh, black and, and gray. Um, and I really just like the kind of stealth build. And then, like I said, here is um, my server. So what I'll probably end up doing is moving this further this way, hoping all the cables run without me having to do anything else super crazy. And then I'll move this server back over here behind the monitor. Um, the other reason I want to do that is because I do have the window here. This gets a lot of light in the summer. I apologize. We just got windows put in, and so I haven't put the, um, the trim back on. But with the gaming PC, I don't want it taking heat off the window and sucking that through and raising the temps, and the ambient temp on this side of the room is going to be slightly higher. I might be being picky, but I'd rather have it away from the window. So... Getting to the sim racing rig, as we look at what I've got going on here, and I'll do a separate video on this. I'd actually recorded the footage, but like I said, I got this seat out of a 2014 Mustang. Um, if you go to car-part.com, um, I think it's internationally connected, but that will let you search junkyards and salvage um, salvage yards in your area or across the United States for any parts that you might be looking for. So in this instance, you'd want to just search for, it's under seat comma front, and you can go looking for seats in your area. The one tip I would have is, and I'll, maybe I'll throw a screenshot in here so you can see it, is don't search specifically by year, put a year of the car that doesn't exist, uh, and then it will let you pick a range later. But I can run through that um, probably actually in another video because I will show you how I found this seat, how to mount it, because it's not just as straightforward as one you would buy off of um, Next Level or Sim Labs or Amazon. There's a couple little modifications you can do. However, what I do love about this seat is it has the handle here, and this is a passenger seat. And the reason I actually look for a passenger seat specifically is generally they have less wear and tear than a driver's side seat. And so this seat came out of a salvaged Mustang. It's in nearly perfect condition. And as you can see, it's just really nice to be able to fold this forward. Again, just so I have a little bit more walking space here as I come into my office, have my chair. So we'll pull this back. I'd say the other thing, I mean, when it comes to seats in real cars, uh, <laughs> they're probably going to just effectively be nicer than the the seats you buy specifically for a sim racing ring. So taking a look at just the cockpit, and I'll move my microphone out of the way here. This is the um, Next Level Racing 160 Ferrari Edition. Um, it's super rigid. Again, I'll do probably a bit more dedicated video on this as well. But you can see you have uh, really adjustable pedals up here it can also go into the or adjustable pedal plate it also can go into a hybrid mode so you can set those a little higher or full f1 if you want to tilt everything back and go into f1 mode 
as you can see, I have mine angled down a little bit. It's just the most comfortable position for my feet given where the seat is at. And again, speaking back to the seat, um, it, this is mounted, these rails are mounted directly, I know it's a little hard to see, are mounted directly to the aluminum extrusion, and then I still get full functionality um, as far as moving the seat with the manual seat rails. With that, if you did want to get an electric seat, you can get converters and you could potentially just get a battery. You'd have to plug everything up, and, but you could do it safely where you could have uh, a fully electro electric seat with adjustability lumbar support and everything else on here if you wanted. Um, but jumping back to the cockpit, like I said, Asetek wheelbase, Asetek wheel obviously, um, Asetek front mount um, for the base. And then what I do like about this is they've got the ability to add the power button right within here. And so I can just turn the base on right there. And then on the other side, if you do have a base that has the torque kill switch, that can mount right here as well. Again, that's specific to, to Asetek. Then just kind of moving on, um, this is the plate for the shifter and probably a handbrake. Um, I will be getting both. I'm just a little up in the air about what shifter I want because I do want to go with a combo H pattern sequential. Uh, as for the handbrake, I'll probably grab the Moza. So that's that in a nutshell. And then just kind of moving on. And I did a video on the Sim Labs stand, but again, I just have all my wires running back along here. They're hanging down right now because I haven't cleaned it up. So this is going to look a little messy, but then I just have another APC surge protector back here and everything wired into that. So um, overall, a lot of things squeezed into a really small uh, space. Um, but I think that's, that's the great thing. If you've, if you've got a corner in your house, uh, if you've got a corner in the office, you can, you can fit a sim racing rig. I'd say this one squared is about 75 inches by 75 inches. And so that's where it fits nice into the corner with the triple monitors. But um, if you didn't have a 75 inch square space to work with, um, you know, you could certainly fit it in other ways. So that's the tour in a nutshell and jump to some closing comments and we'll get out of here. Yeah. So there was, hope you liked the quick little tour. Um, yeah, not much else to say. Like I said, if you like these videos, subscribe below. Got a few other videos coming up here as I get, uh, the shifter, the handbrake. Um, we'll also be ordering some extra parts to upgrade those uh, Asetek pedals. But um, yeah, until next time, keep racing. If you have any questions about setting up your office or your racing rig at home or finding a space for it or where you can source parts like a junkyard seat, go ahead and uh, post comments below and I'll, uh, I'll do my best to answer. So until next time, see you later.